oil paintings that could kill. Did Albrecht and Margaret Durer poison their customers with their paintings? Part 1 by Dr. Elizabeth Garner and Joe Kiernan. Copyright January 2014. How oil paints and pigments were manufactured in Renaissance times. Oil painting was an extremely dangerous occupation. All pigments were handmade using various extremely toxic materials that if not handled with extreme caution and correctly could kill. The process to develop the medium was usually made from a linseed oil base and or a variety of other similar oils as an additive. Olive oil was a popular oil-based mixture of the time until it was discovered oil olive oil works its way through the paint and it ends up dripping out. This happens because the olive oil virtually never dries fully and in time with the added help of moisture in the patron's home or church it eventually comes to the surface. It is known Leonardo da Vinci was adding wax to his paints to thicken them for a better working consistency because of the problem with olive oil. Uh, another trick the Renaissance painters discovered was by adding 5 to 10 percent honey to the mixture it would preserve the discoloration especially in the darker colors. When producing pigments for colors a chemical changing process known back then as alchemy was completely necessary in order to attain the copper sulfate necessary. The more arse arsenous oxide used to do with this is th the deadlier the fumes produced the more concentrated was the toxicity of the pigment powders. Apprentices were usually the ones assigned to mixing these tasks. The masters knew of this and they had to teach them the way to be very very careful in, in the process of which extracting these pigments from the elements at hand. Uh, the colors green, yellow, red, and blue were very highly toxic and in the preparation and application and without a sealing coat to lock in the fumes these would all continue to release poisonous fumes for its entire lifetime. Even with the clear coat in it, it cracks, it chips, it releases toxic fumes again and again. It is really good that all of the Dura paintings are in museums now where only the staff could be getting poisoned. How much green kills? Well, green pigments used in Renaissance were included verdigreen, malachite, emerald green, Paris green. If green pigments are not sealed by a clear binding coat, this pigment will deliver a slow dose of concentrated arsenic gases. The greens produced this way today are just as deadly. Mercury is a byproduct of creating these green prig pigments. Green was deadly. The, the greener, the, the deeper the green, the richer the green, uh, the deadlier it was. And same goes to, with white. The lighter colors used in the whites and soft yellows were created using what was called and is still known as white lead. White lead was a favorite choice of, for many of the time for its consistency, its pliability to create an image over a few days as opposed to uh, having just your basic oil set for a few months. It was highly toxic and during its uh, production and application we must also know that all of these paintings included whites or flesh tones have had white lead added to the mixtures, the palette or the surface of these works. If not sealed by a protective sealing top coat when applied it will continue to release its poisonous lead gases throughout its lifetime. Now when we get to blue, how blue could we really get the colors at the time? You know, it was blue was in high demand. It was a, it was a symbol of wealth when it came to the arts in in pigments for paint, and for dye. Uh, the mercantile, uh, the the fabric trade was just as big, and blues were highly desirable. It was a status symbol because the uh, price that would come with the blue pigments was usually uh, way up through the roof. Uh, for the the blue pigments. It was known that lapis lazuli was the prime choice, uh, as was aquamarine. These two pigments were very expensive and usually on, only ended up on the dress of royalty until the end of the 15th century. Azurite was another excellent option for making a strong blue pigment in the, between the 14th and 16th centuries. It was acquired in deposits in the silver veins and also through the copper ore 
that the mines produced these minerals during the Renaissance times were in Central Europe, mostly in the, by the, owned by the Nuremberg patricians and in France. Azurite on many paintings of the day was often mislabeled as lapis lazuli to cheap customers. No matter how one worked this product, the production and application of this color created many noxious fumes for the arsenic sulfide. Another manufacturing process produced a highly toxic gas known as mercury cyanide. Both byproducts are deadly. Red equaled death. Red equaled yellow death. Uh, making red paint was a hugely sought color by customers in their paintings during this time. Realgar is the most likely choice of pigments in Germany. This mineral is produced in Hungary, Bohemia, and Saxony from the mines once again owned by Nuremberg patrician corporations and syndicates. It can be found in the mines along the veins of lead, silver, and gold. Realgar was known as the ruby of arsenic or ruby of sulfur. It has wonderful qualities and is brilliant red after a mining after a mining brutal production which spewed arsenic gases into the air mining was very dangerous. The powder was then collected and ground into pigment powder. If this powder were left in the sunlight it would turn a shade of yellow. This yellow this shade of yellow is known as orpiment another highly valued color in paintings. Mercury was a strong byproduct of producing the reds, especially the Realgar and Vermilion when making copper sulfate. The mercury is what used to make the copper sulfates for copper engraving metal plates because they have copper. Using mercury to spread the chemical reaction to polish the plate would be used because they could. These chemicals were always on hand. This mercury is a byproduct of producing the powder for the reds and the greens. In the 15th and 16th century, Spain was using Realgar to kill rats. Even some nations still use it for the same purpose today. Even today, Realgar and Orpiment are two of the top three used in the production of arsenic of all deadly materials. At the same time, the pigment of black was being used in the same medium of toxicity. However, the pigment itself was acquired mostly by scraping the soot from lamps and or grinding up burnt bones and horns. The process wasn't toxic. It was an oil base. It was added to the final production, which was fatal. It was to this mixture that Rene Renaissance artists perfected the 5 to 10 percent honey addition to avoid color fading to a gray. Uh, this was also noted in Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks. Uh, it was not a discovery he made, it was merely a notation he had made during class. Now when we get through the pigments, we understand all of the uh, production of these pigments and uh, retrieving the pigments from its natural form elements and its ore is highly toxic. Uh, the, the mercury and arsenic, specifically the mercury, uh, when it was burned off to extract these pigments, it released incredibly high fumes. Um, these fumes of, uh, from burning off liquid mercury was the same process in which shoemakers and hatters at the time uh, were still using the mercury in the same very way to clean the skins and to pull off all uh, natural organic material so they can go ahead and produce the leathers for the appropriate hat or shoe. Uh, burning off these materials in the shoe slash hat maker's shop would often produce the same amount of deadly chemicals, uh, thus the expression mad as a hatter. Uh, arsenic is colorless and it's odorless. Arsenic poisoning was the choice of poisons at the period a la bourgeois. Symptoms of arsenic poisoning began with headaches, confusion, severe diarrhea, drowsiness, as the poisoning symptoms develop, convulsions and changes in fingernail pigmentation, um, this, these were the normal occurrences. Uh, when the poisoning became acute, symptoms included the diarrhea, the vomiting, blood in the urine, cramping of muscles, hair loss, stomach pain, and more convulsions. The organs of the body that are usually affected by arsenic poisonings are the lungs, kidneys, liver, all of the major vital organs. The final result of arsenic poisoning is coma and death. 
arsenic is related to heart disease, hypertension related to cardiovascular, uh, cancer, stroke, chronic lower respiratory diseases, and of course diabetes. Mercury poisoning lets <coughs> mercury poisoning is a great reminder that also in Renaissance times, people with depression and syphilis were being treated with mercury. It was commonly available. They were all adding mercury to wine, as it was known, not to control uh, the, the mercury, the wine business, but you know, mercury uh, was known to make the wine taste a little bit sweeter. So bad wine usually got a little more mercury. Uh, although most of Nuremberg was consuming beer because the water was so polluted, a law was passed in the 16th century banning any land to add mercury to the wine. It was just being added at an unmoderated amount, and people were just being dosed with mercury everywhere they went. Affected children may show red cheeks, uh, no, red nose and lips, loss of hair, teeth, nails, transient rashes, increased sensitivity of light. Other symptoms may include kidney dysfunctions, uh, neuropsychiatric symptoms such as emotional lability, memory impairment, and or insomnia. Now, when we come to lead poisoning, Symptoms may be different in adults and children. The main symptoms in adults are headaches, abdominal pain, memory loss, kidney failure, male reproductive problems, uh, weakness, pain, tingling in the extremities. Early symptoms of lead poisoning in adults are commonly nonspecific and include depression, loss of appetite, intermittent abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, constipation, and muscle pain. Other early signs in adults include fatigue, decreased libido, uh, problems with sleep and unusual tastes in the mouth, and personality changes are also early signs. Of all of these said pigments created, applied, and continue to be deadly toxins until they are sealed within a clear coat of lacquer that seal in these toxins. If they are left unsealed or become begin to flake or turn into a dust or release a fine powder dust, it becomes a deadly painting of toxins. Deteriorating lead paint can produce dangerous levels in the household dust and soil. Deteriorating lead paint and lead containing household dust are the main causes of chronic lead poisoning. Why were any of Durer's paintings left unsealed or overpainted and unsealed? Well, the answer is yes, yes, of course. Even if Durer sealed a painting, all they would have to do is overpaint it on the sealed copy to uh, to poison its clients, uh, just even a little bit. Or if any of the paintings were covered with new pigments, uh, would conceal any trace of the ciphers by others who realized that there were clues by doing so with the restoration. The new paint would be sitting on the surface in brilliant fashion, poisoning by the day. German curators have already proved that there have been many times layers of paint put over and over again in the way the Durer's paintings are set up. Part two will tell us where and who the enemies were and who the Durer's hated and who they were poisoning. <laughs>